Oh boy, today we made some soup and it was scrumptious. I almost always start with butter and onions. And I like chopping up my vegetables with a knife that has a, a, a flat blade and then the, the handle angles up. That way you can chop with it and not get your fingers squished in the way. I like to add about a cup of celery and so I just hold the whole clump together. I haven't cut the bottom off. I don't cut off a single stalk. I just keep the whole thing together. I trim off the end and freshen up the ends and, and I just visualize about how much I want. I need about a cup of celery so I make one little notch there and then chop it up and then I put it in the strainer and rinse it really well and add it to my soup. Oh my goodness and it starts to smell so good. Peeled a bunch of carrots, chopped off the ends from both ends, and then I line them up. If they're really skinny, I make a little bit bigger chunks, but if they're kind of fat, I use real thin slices because the thicker and bigger and harder the vegetables are, the longer it takes to cook. So if it's a big fat end of a carrot, then I have to cut them smaller. If they're kind of skinny, they can be bigger. But then once I get down to the ends where they're all getting kind of big, then I chop them in half lengthwise so that they're skinnier again. And then I line them up on the board so that I've got a flat face down on either end, and then that kind of helps hold them together. And then I can keep on chopping them when I line them up. And then I get down to little bits and pieces and then chop them up. But anyway, that's how I do it. It's just one of those option things, you know. And then I add them all in there, and oh, I put the cover on and just let them start to simmer. And oh, then I add my spices, some salt and pepper, and some seasoned salt. You know, there's all kinds of options. Maybe you don't want a lot of salt, so there are some non-salt options out there. Or you could even just do individual spices. But I oftentimes like to use some of the pre-mixed ones so I don't have to add so many things. And I try not to add too much salt right away. And then I mix up some broth. Um, I usually start with a good four cups of water and depending on what kind of meat I'm using, I'll, I almost always, almost always add some chicken broth or chicken soup base to it. Um, but today I'm gonna be using venison, so I'm gonna put some beef broth in there too. And mm, I even have some brown gravy stuff that I can add in there. So anyway, I'm gonna put those in there and mix them up. Oh my goodness, the most important secret, shh, don't tell anybody, Lipton's onion soup mix. You might have noticed, I'll, I'll use all kinds of off brands of other things, but when it comes to Lipton onion soup mix, it needs to be Lipton. Oh my, yum, yum. So you just sprinkle all that stuff in there and you put the cover on it and let it simmer for a little bit while you're heating up the, the water and the, and the soup bases. And then once that's hot, it takes ah, you know two, three minutes in the microwave to get that. And then I stir it up really well before I add it in. And oh, then you pour it in and it is so good. And when I get almost to the end, then I kind of swoosh it around a little bit to make sure I get all the good stuff off the bottom. And then after I pour it in, I actually add a little more water and get the rest of the good stuff because, you know, it leaves a lot of good stuff on the edges. Oh, yum. And it just starts to smell so good as it simmers. And I stir it up every once in a while and then just put the cover back on it. Oh, by the way, if you don't have a bacon press, oh my goodness, you need to get a bacon press because it is the best thing when you are frying in a um, cast iron skillet. Oh, yeah. And this one's so cute. Anyway, I put a little bit of my bacon grease from my griddle style um, cast iron griddle um, in a pan and then, oh, and I, you need a sharp knife. So I wash my things, you know me, I'm kind of a neat freak. So I'm constantly washing things in between. But anyway, before I cut meat, I want to make sure my knife is sharp. So I've got this handy dandy little sharpener thing and yeah, I use it all the time, but only with a clean knife. Don't ever touch my sharpener with a dirty knife. Anyway, um, if there's any white stuff left on the venison, I like to trim that off so it's all nice and clean and rinse it off with some water and then I just start slicing it. I always thaw my my meat just in a pan of hot water rather than um, in the microwave. I do not like to thaw meat in the microwave. So anyway, a little bit of bacon grease, a little bit of butter, and then I slice up my meat and trim off any of the white stuff, and then I put it in there and just start sizzling it, just frying it up um, fairly high heat and fairly quickly. Oh my goodness, and then just keep stirring it and, and cutting it. That's another nice thing about in a cast iron skillet. You can cut right in there. Um, and then I add a little bit of flour. I usually use a, a coffee strainer and just kind of sift it in there and it just gets a nice little bit at a time so you can keep stirring it in. If you dump the whole glob in there, then it's kind of hard to get all the lumps out. I don't like lumpy gravy. 
So anyway, um, I sprinkle a little on there and then stir it up and that makes the best yummy, messy stuff on the bottom of your pan. Anyway, after all the meat is fried, I dump that into, oh, and there I'm showing you how you can even cut right in the cast iron skillet because they're really hard. They don't have any goofy Teflon coating on them and yeah, it works really well. Anyway, you let this stuff sizzle up really well and then you pour a little bit of wine or some whiskey or something on it if you'd like, or a little bit more broth. But oh, you put that little bit of, of moisture on there and let it sizzle and then that softens up some of the good fawn on the bottom of the pan and then you dump that all in with the rest of your soup that's already going. Oh, it is so good. And then whatever's left on the bottom of that meat pan, all the, the flour that's gotten kind of browned and almost, um, almost burnt on the bottom of the pan. I put my potatoes in there, chopped up really small, and cover it with water, and then the water is going to soften up all that yummy stuff that's almost burnt on the bottom of the pan. Oh, yum! Don't ever waste that stuff. Anyway, then I put the cover on there, and I let those potatoes simmer a little bit because I didn't put them in at the beginning with the rest of the vegetables, and I want them to hurry up. So anyway, I cut them up kind of small, and then I tossed everything together and let it simmer for a while, and then I served it with some of my <gasps> scrumptious peasant bread and a little glass of, yeah, I know. My, the people who know me really well know that's not wine. It's just juice. But anyway, um, it looks really pretty, though. So there you go. Some homemade venison vegetable soup and homemade peasant bread. <gasps> oh, come over and have supper with me sometime. Toodaloo.